What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss it. CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back 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 CAP zapping all you hoes away like CAP zapping all you hoes away like already crying and they were all like everybody got silent on set because they're like how does she know she's going home everybody go 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 It's close to midnight, it's another night, and mm -hmm, I'll be by your side. I wanna take you there, show you how to care. I want your love, I want your life, I want your love, I want your, I want your answer. You will leave me with your favorite fantasy, your favorite. Going back to the <laughs> good morning, everybody. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. What's going on? This is Oliver Twist, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work once again. And today, I'm finally giving the people what they motherfucking want. Yes, I'm getting this shit started already because y'all have harassed me. About talking to Miss Stacey, and I know there's been a lot of confusion. When is Oliver and Stacey gonna go live? Okay, I think I can't remember. Stacey Ann is a very bu busy lady. Okay, she gets to the money and has no problem saying, "Miss Oliver, you gonna have to wait, girl, because I got I gotta go get it. Hey, I gotta handle this right fast." All respect to my to to to, to my get money bunnies out there. Get your money. And then it was like an inauguration one time, and then I don't know. But listen, we are finally here. Every ass better be in this classroom because y'all have harassed me, 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 harassed me. See, my hair falling out. Tuck. In a butt. Listen, I have the pleasure of speaking to Stacey Ann from Cycle 10 of America's Next Top Model. She was my personal favorite and pick to win that season. So it is a pleasure. It is an honor to speak to her. So without further ado, hit the plus. And we shall wait for the queen to make her entrance. Yes, perfect attendance today. Ooh. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well. I can't complain. I literally just rolled out of bed. <laughs> you look fabulous. You look nice too. Thank you so much for agreeing Thank to do you. this with me. Thank you so much for having me. I've been also getting lots of requests. Like, when are you gonna talk to Oliver? When are you gonna talk to Oliver? So. Oh, yeah, they were not going to let it go. <laughs> they were not going to let it go until it happened, and now it's happening. Yes, finally. So tell us, where are you calling from in the world today? 
I am actually in Florida. I just moved. Um, I moved back out of New York, back to Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, my neighbor was like, "Oh my God, you look cute! Where are you going?" I'm like, "I'm going to Instagram." <laughs> <laughs> For the marvelous occasion, yes. yeah. I was like, I'm going to Instagram. And they're like, what? I'm like, Instagram. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. No, so. you look amazing. What part of Florida? I was just down there. Uh, I know. How was your vacation? She was cute. You know, it was just a little slight tip out. You know, nothing oh, too, nothing too serious. My, Miami's been popping, so I know you had a good time down there. Well, you know, I'm not really uh, an outdoorsy type of type of gal. You know, I'm not like a bar, lounge, club, especially anywhere I have to stand on the line, more than likely I won't be in attendance. And, you know, I think I'm somebody. So if I don't know the owner and I can just bypass my way into your facility, I probably won't be attending. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't I don't stand in line. Oh, that sounds so bad, but I just don't. I'm sorry. You should not. You should not. Um, I just moved about two hours north of Miami. So I'm on like the Naples side on the West Coast. I oh. bought a house here. So it's quiet, but still close enough to Miami if I need to get mm-hmm. there. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. So, of course, I pulled you out of bed to talk about <laughs> America's Next Top Model, Cycle 10. I How know. Is- it's been so long. I can't uh-huh. believe it was t- uh, 2008. So, it's like, almost like 13 years. It's forever. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to still be getting asked about it? It's crazy. It's, it's a good feeling um, that people you know, love the show that much mm-hmm. and they have their favorites and they have their fans and people still ask me. So it, it's a good feeling to <laughs> still get questions about it. Tell me, what are some of the top questions you still get asked to this day? Of course, everyone's always like t- asking me about the lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the very <laughs> first. A uh, question and about my haircut and mm-hmm. my elimination. So those are about the top three questions. Yes. Of course, you know, there were a bunch of questions down in the comment section asking yes. if you would grace us with the song and dance today. Oh, my God. I was like... <laughs> I was like, I can't. <laughs> that was so embarrassing for me. I was like, I was like, should I? I was like, no. <laughs> I, I I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. But, respect, um, respect, respect. Tell us about that moment. Like, how did you pull that? What hat did you pull that out of? Like, what made you do that in that moment? Oh, man. So, of course, you know, you, everyone has to, like, talk about something that they've, you know, always wanted to do or some deep secret or something Mm -hmm. like that. So, I was like, oh, well, I've always, you know, desired to be an exotic dancer. And so, Tyra was like, what? (laughs) And so, of course, Jay Manuel was like, they were like, have him sit and do the dance. And I was like, all right, well, I have to have some music. Like, if you're in a strip club, you're dancing. So, I was like, I made up some song in my head. I was like, do 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 and everyone was like, what? I was like, you know, I can't dance without music. So I made it up. And um, I didn't think it would have gone that viral. So the people loved it. And they, after the end, they were like, oh, my God. Everyone was just laughing. The camera people, tired, everybody was laughing. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> no, no. We're not laughing at you at you we're definitely laughing with you because yeah. that is that is funny was how funny. was it meeting tyra and seeing jay and miss jay for the first time it was amazing um of course tyra is gorgeous uh, to meet her in person and to see like sometimes you know you meet celebrities in person and they might not look how they look on tv mm-hmm. or they have on so much makeup that they still don't look the same but tyra is definitely a natural beauty like she's mm-hmm. gorgeous 
and um and she was tall like i had on heels and she had on heels and she was still like taller than me and i'm like pretty i'm like 5'10 and she's pretty tall and i was Ooh. like you know you're just like ah it's tyra you know but she was really pretty i was really stoked and uh j manuel he's like the perfect ken doll like there's nothing out of place like every hair is in in place like his clothes is perfectly intact like mm -hmm. he's just like a walking ken doll and then miss j is just like a sweetheart so you know i love miss j like it's like your fairy godmother well let's Let's back up a little bit before I move forward and ask you, what made you even try out for America's Next Top Model? So how ironically is that I was in school, I was in college when the show was on. And I used to watch the show. I watched like a season or two before with my mom. But um, I used to be like, oh, my God, I could never do that show I am not dramatic. Like, those girls are very catty and dramatic. I was like, I could never do it. Um, and it's so crazy that God, like, made the, the audition was at my school. Mm -hmm. which is crazy. So they had the audition at my school. And I kept going in line to audition. And I kept leaving. I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do it. And then I went mm -hmm. audition, and I was like, I can't do it. I was the last girl to audition. I was like, Hi, my name's Stacy Ann, and uh, <laughs> I want to be a model. And they're like, we love you. And I was like, what? <laughs> so it was crazy, but that's how it just, the opportunity came right to my, my doorstep, basically. Mm, that is so dope. So you were the last girl to audition in uh, your yeah, city. Yeah, in school, I was the last girl to audition, and they were like, we love you, and they sent me to go do the next audition in Boston, so. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, of course, we know you move forward. Walk us through, if you remember, what you remember, what you felt when you first got there, once you saw, like, the set, producers, the girls, the mics, the lights, like, what was going through your body and mind? Like, it's one thing to watch the show, but now you are the show. I know. It's a very surreal feeling because you have to be mic'd up all the time, mm -hmm. and your the apartment is just, the whole ceiling is full of cameras, and there's just cameras following you everywhere. And they're even allowed to follow you into the bathroom if there's two mm -hmm. girls in the bathroom talking. Um, so there's cameras on you all the time. Uh, it's just very surreal. Like, I remember just, like, waking up, like, I can't believe this is my life. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. there's just cameras. But um, it's something to get used to, but you get used to it very quickly. Because you, you know it's TV and you're, you're, you have to put on your best face. So Right. Like, well. I'm curious to know, I've never asked anyone this question. You're the first person. Do you remember, like, any do's or don'ts when you first got there from, I don't know, maybe a wrangler or, or producer who's like, you can do this, but you can't do this? Um, you just know. They basically let you know. They never told us what to say, but they did tell at least for me they told me like we need you to create drama like if you're not creating drama you're basically going home uh i don't know if they told everybody else that but they told me <laughs> and i kind of knew i had to like put on an act like while i was there but mm -hmm. i wasn't a dramatic girl so i kept trying to like just hang out with the girls that were dramatic and like put on my like, act but I knew that wasn't gonna get me that far so that's how I think I got eliminated because I wasn't being as dramatic as they wanted me to be but um but basically yeah we just had to always keep talking they wanted us to just create content basically on gotcha that. Um, speaking of girls and being dramatic in the house, we are going to do Top Model Roll Call, which is basically where I say every name of every girl who's casted on your cycle, and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. But whatever first comes to your brain, you have to tell us. 
Are you ready? I don't even remember. Okay, all right. Let's see. Give me a moment. Go all right. Okay. So the first one up, may she rest in peace every time I say her name, you send her spirit, loves, kisses, and hugs, is Kimberly. Oh my god. I completely forgot about Kimberly until I read it in the comments like, how did you feel about her? Going home, I was like, oh my god, I forgot about her. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that was the ways, I guess, that she wanted to go home and other girls could have taken her spot, right? So, Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to (laughs) say. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. (laughs) Um... Ooh, y'all, y'all gonna beat me up. Why am I not remembering how to pronounce the second girl's name? Adalia? Uh, was it like... Atalia, was it... Atalia. Oh, Atalia. Sorry. She was so I was like... sweet. I loved her. Adalia. She was great. Mm-hmm. Um, super sweet girl. Um, I think she should have lasted longer for sure. How was that first photo shoot with the, um, with the homeless people? That was really well. Wait, wait, hold on, pause. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me correct my mouth. <laughs> that sounded that, that sounded so bad. How was the photo shoot with the theme homeless people? Because the people there were not homeless. That's true. <laughs> well, actually, it was a shelter. I think it was for a shelter with some of the mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I believe actually. They, I believe they were from a. They, I believe they lived lived in a shelter. I I do think that, but they weren't on the street. Right. Um. Mm. It was very cool. Um. That's when I believe, um, Isis was. She came on that shoot. Mm-hmm. With that. Um. So we got to mm-hmm. meet her there. Um. It was the first shoot, and it was different. It was like, how do you pose and like, you're supposed to be homeless, but um. It was very grungy, but it was still very, very cool. Someone asked in the comments, like, how long did you each girl get to shoot? And it was about, like, 30 minutes to, like, 45 minutes each girl got with a photographer. But it was it was very nerve-wracking because it was the first shoot. But it was still – it was pretty cool because you got to meet all the other extra girls, too. hmm Okay, the next person out the gate was Allison. Allison. I liked Allison. She was a very like um I what's the word to explain Allison? Um of course I'm the girl that liked everybody. So, mm-hmm. Um she was very straightforward kind of girl. Like she said what was on her mind. Like there wasn't like she wasn't a cookie cutter kind of girl. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought she was cute too, so I liked her. <laughs> Amos. Amos. Amos was hilarious. She was the girl that brought all the laughter, and she was just super funny. She was super quirky. Um, it was very sad to see her go because she just made us laugh all the time. Mm-hmm. So, Marvita Washington. Marvita is my girl, and uh, I called her the body because she had an amazing body, mm-hmm. um, and she would cook in the house, so uh, she would teach me how to cook, and she was just like, she was like a big sister. Mm-hmm. I loved her. Were you shocked when she went home? Definitely shocked when she went home. I think, you know, it was just... Yeah, she shouldn't have went home and she did, but, you know, it's TV and they eliminate for the wrong reasons, but I was definitely sad. I was very sad when she went home, actually. Amy. Amy. Which one's Amy again? (laughs) Um... I'm trying to pull things out to remember. Amy went home when you guys did the music photo shoot, and they gave her R&B, and I think the styling was very bad for Amy. She had red hair. (laughs) I'm Okay, I remember. Oh, Amy! I'm sorry, guys. I haven't watched my show in so long, and it's been 13 years. Oh, yeah. But she, um, Amy, 
was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was she the like the really tiny one? Oh my god. No, I don't okay. think Amy I don't think Amy was tiny. I just remember hold on, I'll show you a picture of her. Give me one second. Oh god. Yeah, Mor she was the Mormon run, right? Do -do 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 -do. Yes. Amy, she was the Mormon. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry, Amy. <laughs> um, she was very sweet. She was Mormon, so she was very uh we didn't well, I hadn't known a lot about it, so she taught us a lot about, you know, her background and being, like, how she wouldn't really pose nude or do certain things and living, like, very restricted. Um, I remember Amy now. <laughs> but um, I, didn't think, I didn't think she would last long on the show, but I thought she was very pretty, like, as a typical model. Like, in the model world, I think she could work a lot. Like, she's mm -hmm. a typical, you know, beauty kind of girl. But on gotcha. the show, I didn't think she was, like, a a reality show girl. Gotcha. What about... <laughs> Thank you for the reference. No, you're, you're fine. I got you. That's what I'm here for. What about Claire? Claire, oh my gosh, she's my girl as well, and I loved her. She was so, me and her auditioned together. So after I auditioned at school, then I went to Boston to do the official, official uh, audition, and me and Claire were together. And um, she was just a very, like, burst of energy. Um, she was just so different, and she had, you know, her daughter, so it was so cool to, like, have, like, a mom in the house, and so she was very mature, but also just a very outgoing girl, and her look was so different, she, you know, she had the cheekbones, and mm -hmm. she was cool, I like Claire. <laughs> So in the chat that I did with Claire, she told us about the mutiny that she organized. Do, do you remember her 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 moment where she organized this? How does God help me? It was like, did she use the words riot in like where she was protesting the producers or something like that from the phones? I believe. Do you remember? <laughs> She was very outspoken. I remember, like, if she didn't like how something was going on or if she, you know, she felt like something wasn't right, she was very, very outspoken about mm -hmm. it and not afraid to step up to the producers or, like, even in the end, she's like, I'm going to get Tyra's email because I want to speak to her one-on-one. -on -one. And I was just like... I was like, I would never think to be like, all right, I need to talk to Tyra one on one. But Claire was very like a very activist type girl. Mm hmm. Okay, the next person on our list is Lauren. Lauren, I loved Lauren as well. Um, she's super the most quirky out of all of us. Um, she didn't know anything about modeling at all. I remember we did some challenge where we had to put on face cream and she was like face cream or eye she's like eye cream I don't know. she's like I don't use anything like that so um it was she was like a, a a breath of fresh air because she was so different like she didn't know anything about like the modeling industry at all but mm -hmm. um it was fun to watch her grow also like trying to get into the walking and the photo shoots and stuff like that because um, even though she did she wasn't good at it but she wanted to learn and she had that look so it was great to see her transform into the model like she had a lot of potential you know mm -hmm. everyone saw a model when they looked at her mm -hmm. she was like a little punk rock girl <laughs> You know, it's so bad to laugh at someone else's demise, but her cover girl photo shoot when they first got to their international destination is one of my favorite things to watch because it is so bad. <laughs> it's so bad, but it is so entertaining in the yeah. realm of reality TV. Sorry, Lauren. I'm so sorry. We've chatted a couple times. Everyone send Lauren well wishes. She's recovering still. Um, but we're going to send her hugs, kisses, and all the positive things yes. and whatnot. Um, the next person on my list, well, on the list, is Katarjana. 
Uh, Katarina, she hold on, was... hold on, Stacey Ann. I'm sorry. What is the what is the right way to pronounce? I just called her Cat. <laughs> I think I'm gonna sit with Cat because every time I say her name, I see these motherfuckers down in the comments saying, "Zip, zip." Listen, I'm sorry. I'm trying exactly. My best. I want to destroy it. Do you I see him? Call her Cat. <laughs> So, um, right, I don't want to say it wrong either, um, but I was just, I was like, can I call you Kat? She was cool with that. Um, gorgeous girl, super gorgeous girl. I, when I, I was like, she's going to win. Like, she's just so pretty. Um, she was, uh, I don't know how to explain her. Like, her, she was just like a really well together, well mannered girl like mm -hmm. you know, see a girl that's just well together she wasn't very dramatic or like very talkative that much but she was just very posed like girl mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i do understand what you're <laughs> saying i really want to get the pronunciation of her name right today so everyone can leave me the h-e double l alone <laughs> Yeah. Hold on, let me see. I just saw someone like pronounce pronounce it. They spelled it out. Kata. <laughs> oh, is it just Zen like Zinna, or is there a is there like a Katar Zinna or Katar Katar Zinna? Zinna, I don't. Kata Zinna. I thought it was Kata Zinna. Kata Zinna. Kata Zinna. And I took a whole yeah. year of diction when I went to college, and I'm struggling. Katagina, Katagina. It's not Katagina, but it's Katagina. Is am I saying it right? Y'all tell me something. Katagina. <laughs> They're giving you pronunciations in there. Cat <laughs> catastrophe. That's what it is right now going on. Okay, okay. I think they said I got it. Okay, y'all send me voice memos and tell me and tell me the right way to say it. All right, the next person on our list is Dominique. Dominique, Dominique. I, you know what? I really loved our season. I didn't really watch a lot of seasons, but I felt like Cycle Ten. They brought so many great personalities. I felt like everyone they selected was like such a strong <laughs> personality. I'm sorry, I have to turn these comments off because now they're being meanies. <laughs> Someone talks about Katagina. That's not right. Oh my god! <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> sorry, um, I'm so sorry. Dominique was a very strong personality. And mm -hmm. what I adored about her is that no matter how much people were putting her down, how much mm -hmm. they were laughing at her, how much... You know, they would say, like, oh, you look like a man. Like, no matter what they said to her, she would just say, thank you, thank you. And she would just absorb the negative and just push back out positive. I was just like, how does she do that? Like, most girls would just break down crying. and But Dominique, she took everything anyone said and just brushed it off. She brushed it off and was like, I don't care. What anybody says about me, like, I know I'm the shit, like, and I mm -hmm. about her. I had reached out to her to talk to her, and we've, we've emailed, I think we've texted, too. I know we've DM'd back and forth, but I don't know. Maybe she just got uninterested. I don't know, because I love Dominique. I yeah. love Dominique Sarkleton, and I would love to kiki with her down to the Instagram live. So, you guys. If you guys are watching this, let Ms. Dominique know that Ms. Oliver is still alive and very yeah. much so still interested in talking to her. I'll reach out to her, too. I know she's, like, you know... She's a businesswoman now. Mm -hmm. too, but I'm pretty sure she would love to come on and talk about her experience. <laughs> we don't pray. I'll send out a message, too. Thank you. The next person on our list is Fatima! Fatima! Oh my god, what a gorgeous girl, right? That's another mm -hmm. thing. I was just like, wow, they picked such beautiful girls. Um, and we would just constantly, she'd be like, you're beautiful. And I'm like, no, you're beautiful. And I'm like, <laughs> you're beautiful. I'm like, no, you're beautiful. <laughs> um, someone asked, you know, was she as horrible as they portrayed her? I think, again, 
everyone they picked on our cycle was very strong personality, you know. Um, were we being different than who we were? Maybe a little bit more extra because it's TV. But for the most part, I felt like everybody was kind of true to who they are. And um, Fatima uh, is a very strong personality. And um, she also is another girl that doesn't take no shit and, mm -hmm. and speaks her mind. And um, I loved her ambition. Like, she's like she knew what she wanted mm -hmm. and she was going for it. So I, I loved her drive. Mm-hmm. The next person on our list is Anya. Anya, oh my gosh, she was so cute, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Anya also really wanted, like, she wanted to win. If anybody really expressed that they wanted to win the show, it was Anya. Like, she mm -hmm. was like, I want to be a model, and like, she worked really hard. She would like practice her poses and. And she she had a lot of drive. Like, she wanted it really, really, really bad. Okay. And last but not least, the winner of Cycle 10, Whitney. Whitney. Okay. Whitney was like a little Southern Belle girl. Um, uh, I loved her. We got along really great on the, on the, on the show and in the house. Um, mm -hmm. She was another one that would cook a lot too in the kitchen with me and Marvita. Um, and um, she, she, she had a lot going on. Like there's a lot that she wanted to do. Like modeling mm -hmm. was not just her only thing. Like she wanted to be a model, but you could tell that there was other things in life that she, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to do. And she had her dog and she was really big into charities and stuff like that. So I liked Whitney a lot. <laughs> so I'm curious to know from you, who I think is one of the nicest people Top Model has ever seen, uh, what do you is believe is the disconnect between people's perception of Whitney and what Whitney thinks she's putting out to the world? Because, of course, the comment sections, they tear Whitney up every time a Taco <laughs> Tan flyer gets posted. And, you know... Some of the chats when people talk about her is not the most positive but what do you believe is the disconnect when i read the comments too because i my relationship with whitney was great like she was a sweetheart to me we even met up in london she was modeling in london and i was modeling in london and we met up and she bought me lunch and she was a really sweet girl but um i don't know if you know, you can have a relationship with somebody and then they have a relationship with someone else and they'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, what's, what do you think about that person? And they're like, that is not the same person. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if she, I don't know. Because with me, she's a sweetheart, but I read in the comments too that people are like, she is not nice and she's a bitch and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's <laughs> not the girl that I know but um there's definitely some sort of disconnect maybe I don't know if there's other things that she's putting out there that with a different persona that people don't like maybe but um there's definitely a disconnect I've seen the comments too they mm -hmm. destroy her in the comments they annihilate her every time I'm like oh my god so uh, I, I think what plays a part in that is a piece of it is that she was in the bottom so many times, but she kept getting saved until she eventually won, which makes people think that she was pre-selected to win. Have you heard this before? And is that something that you believe? Um, I think that she was in the beginning. I wouldn't have thought that, but we all knew with cycle 10, we knew that they were going to do something different. Mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't really have that much of a chance to win because when I got there, everyone, including Tyra, Jay, everyone was like, you look just like Danielle that just won, you know? So I was like, well, they kept telling me, you look just like Danielle. So I was like, all right, you guys are, you, Danielle just won and I'm definitely not going to win, right? So um, 
but they kept trying to pull but, uh, things out of the bag to make cycle 10 different. So, you know, first plus size. So in the end, we kind of all, I think, I, at least I figured it out that, you know, they definitely wanted, you know, a first plus size, but I think it was pre-selected, predetermined. Hmm. Sydney, Sydness99 wants to know, what is your favorite moment left on the cutter room floor? Um, there's a moment where we're all like playing like uh, charades or something in the living room. And um, Fatima, we, we had to like pick out movies. And Fatima, the movie that was selected for Fatima was Snake on the Plane. <laughs> and um, she grabbed a bag of chips and she was like eating it. And she, we were trying to figure out what movie. So she kept eating the bag of chips and we we're like, what movie? And she's like doing the plane and we're like, plane. And she was like, at the end, she was like, snacks on a plane. <laughs> How long did each girl get to do a photo shoot if she remembers? Do, 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 do. Um, yep. So most girls, sometimes it was longer, but uh, it was at least 30 minutes mm -hmm. um, to an hour. <laughs> and um, we did get a lot of frames mm -hmm. in, um, but I definitely think they picked good <laughs> frames versus bad frames if they wanted you to get sent home. So definitely... Yeah, I on my elimination i was like really i was like that's the picture you guys picked out but i was like okay whatever so um but we all got like a good at least solid 30 45 minutes with each photo shoot do you feel okay because you just said something and so i'm gonna ask you now other than yourself who do you believe got a not so good picture selected of them because they wanted them to send them. They wanted to send them home that week. Um, I feel like I remember. I know. I feel like I think Anya was it Anya's picture, or was it Claire's picture? Maybe Claire, because Anya stayed to the end. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Claire's picture that I was like really and that's how you kind of knew that they would select because you sometimes you get to watch the other girls photo shoot and you can mm -hmm. see like they're doing really good and like you see the shots that they're getting so when mm -hmm. at the end when they pick out these pictures you're like really why did they pick that one but um they definitely pick the worst picture when you're getting eliminated hands down Thank it. Okay. Sailor underscore Freddie underscore Mercury is saying they did her dirty with that makeover. Let's talk makeover starting with yours. Did you like it? I hated my makeover. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hated my makeover um, because I clearly asked for a long, beautiful weave, and I was, was like, I can't wait to get my Naomi Campbell hair and stuff like that, and um, I think they definitely did that on purpose <laughs> because I asked for it. So I was like, I shouldn't have asked for it because then they definitely did opposite of what I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, why did I say anything? Um, but... At the same time, even though I ha I hated it, and people were like, oh, Bart Simpson haircut, it was a terrible haircut. And to be a black girl, and you cut your hair like that, and it wasn't, it was like half relaxed and half natural, it was terrible. So I had like kinky and then a little bit of straight hair. It did look just like Bart Simpson's haircut. <laughs> 
And so I was just like, you guys can't leave my hair. At least relax it all the way or cut off like the other parts that aren't. So it, it looked horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Um, however, go, looking back, I think I was so insecure about the haircut because I've never had a short haircut before like that. But going back, if I went back, I would try to embrace it more because mm -hmm. I feel like the show did me wrong and in that endeavor. But at the same time, maybe Tyra did see something where she's like, oh, your jawline and you don't need hair. So mm -hmm. I feel like if I could go back in time, like I should have embraced the haircut more than I did, you know? So, cause if I did, I think I would have definitely gotten farther, but I was very insecure about it, but I should have just owned the look. Hmm. What else do you remember from makeover day? Um, I remember Marvita's. <laughs> Uh, main hair uh, <laughs> that was interesting um, I know uh, Claire got to go blonde she did oh Claire's like was that. amazing uh, Whitney went blonde as well I think the girls that had to get their hair bleached or I thought in the end I don't really remember anybody loving their hair I think Amos was it Amos that went red no it was whoever went red they liked it but overall i don't think like most people say i um, mean everybody doesn't like the makeovers don't go really well on top model in my opinion mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> but from what i can remember you can correct me if i'm wrong but i remember you not like having like a whole meltdown smelt down about it like you tried to be positive about it you know yeah, I was like my reaction which someone said I was like uh I was like that's different she said <laughs> it y'all she said it <laughs> I was like I don't know if I I thought about it in my head I was like in my head I knew they wanted a big reaction and I didn't know which way I wanted to go I was like do I like cry or do I just be like okay whatever and I was just like alright it's not that serious so I'm mm -hmm. not gonna like have a meltdown so I was just like alright because I was just like it was not what I was expecting mm -hmm. I just wish they had more experienced people with like black hair on uh -huh. the to help you, you know with the makeovers that makes sense that makes sense so Sid Ness 99 is also also asking, excuse me, what is your favorite photo shoot? Um, my favorite photo shoot was I really liked the first one. The homeless one was really cool. Um, I really liked my look on that one. Um, I liked, you know, the grunge look. It was cool. Um, I did win the challenge with the paint picture but that was uh that was a very tough tough photo shoot because that paint was all in my eyes and it was really hard and I was very shocked I was very shocked that I won that challenge um that photo shoot or got called first mm -hmm. um because but it taught you real life photo shoots because when you get paid as a model and in real life and they're putting all that paint on you, you have to get the shot. So that was a real good real life situation where you can't cry about it. Like, oh my God, there's paint in my eyes. Like if you're getting paid to do something, like they want the shot. So I remember, I don't know if it was Miss J or J Manuel, like keep your eyes open <laughs> to get that shot. And someone encouraged me. I was like, I wanted to cry. Like, I was like, it's burning me. Do you understand? I'm getting paint in my eyes. And they're like, get the shot. And like, I was able to just like hold my head up and like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do what you need to do. Models, y'all, y'all. It's just like, there's no consideration. Hey, there's paint. There's a chemical in my eye right now. Can we? They would fire me. I talk, I'll probably, they were like, this bitch talk too much. <laughs> So, the lost Levi is asking, I'm sorry, let me go back. 
The real one, Henrik Larson, is asking, did they select your photo with the same pose over and over on purpose? I noticed this, too. Is this something that you noticed? I, when Tyra called it out and was like, Stacey, you have the same pose over and over. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I mean, I think all models have, like, that signature pose, but I'm not mm -hmm. doing the same pose. Like, I mean, there's other poses, too, you know? So, yes. I did have the same pose, but there were other poses in those reels, you know? So I was like, okay. She was like, oh, you just keep doing the same thing. And I was just like, yeah, I have the signature pose, but I'm doing other ones too. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, they did keep selecting it. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so... Going back to the lost Levi, he is asking, since Jay Manuel let it spill that the airport panel was originally going to be a double elimination before Kimberly quit the first week, do you think that production cooked up Fatima's travel document trouble just to have some drama for the week? Um, I definitely think it was cooked up. Um, there's no way that all of that just happened out of nowhere, you know? Um, we had no idea, but I believe Fatima definitely knew um, about all that happening. Um, so I didn't know, and I did not expect to be going home because I had won the challenge the week before, and my picture got pulled the first as well. So on elimination day, um, when I was at bottom two, um, and I'm standing there with Fatima. We had to take a break because they ran out of film or something. And in that break, <laughs> Fatima turned to me and she goes, good luck in, in Rome or something, or good luck uh, wherever we were going. She was like, um, good luck. And something in the way that she said it to me, when she turned to me and she's like, good luck. And me and her, because they had me and her standing and we were bottom two but they paused before they recorded it. And she turned to me and she said that, and she's like, good luck. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> they're sending me home. There was something in what she said, and it was just very simple. She's like, good luck when you go overseas. And she said it in such a way that I was like, oh my God, she knows that she's not going home. And I just started boo crying. I was like, oh my God, because I was like, I was like, it's obvious that they're going to send her home because she missed the photo shoot. And in every top model, if the girl misses the photo shoot, she gets sent home. So I was standing there very confident, like, there's no way they're sending me home. And I was like, ready to pack my bags and go. And she said, all she said to me was like, good luck when you go. And I was like, and she said it in like a weird, slick way that I knew, I was like, wow, they're sending me home. And I just started crying. And the producers, Tyra, Jay Manuels, everyone, the judges, they were all like, their faces were like, how? They hadn't announced, Tyra hadn't announced it. She hadn't said I was going home yet, but I was already crying. And they were all like, everybody got silent on set because they're like, how does she know she's going home? And so people don't know, that's one T that people don't know, is that they had to really edit that because um, I was already crying before Tyra told me I was going home. And people don't know this. So they had to edit it to show my face before I was crying. So, but that was one thing most people <laughs> don't know. And it was funny that I started crying, even Fatima, she was like, oh my God, what did I say? And I was just like, it was just something in which how she said it that I knew that she wasn't going home. I was like, oh my God, they're gonna switch it up. They're gonna change things up and they're gonna send me home. And I was just like, I just like crying. I was like, that's not fair, but I know. And so most people were like, <laughs> Everyone was like, that was awful what they did. And I was so upset. I was so upset but at the end because they want you to talk about how you feel. And I was just like, I'm not talking to you guys. I, I can't believe you're sending me home. 
and one of the producers came to me and they're like, Stacy, you're so beautiful. And uh, we know you don't need to win the show to be successful. And I was just like, screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was very upset, but in the end, you know, it's TV. So I, you know, most girls, a lot of girls come off the show hating the show, whatever, or their experience. But in the end, we know what we're signing up for and it's TV. And they did what they needed to do to get ratings or like to get reactions. You know, every TV show needs to get reactions and that my elimination was one of the biggest reactions in top model history so everyone was shocked like what so um they I then knew why they did what they did <laughs> so the executive producer of the show I'm currently on that's airing right now on we TV the TS Madison experience <laughs> Oh, yeah. new episode comes out today at 10 p.m., guys. So I if you guys watch it. watch it, but he's the executive producer, but he was a producer, a longtime producer on Top Model, and he was there when you were there. Do you remember a guy by the name of David St. John? Uh, maybe if I saw his face, was he the one that spoke to me at the end? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I asked David about this, and I should have called him last night to clarify what I can and cannot <laughs> Well, it's not really what I can and can I say because he don't give a damn. But I just want to make sure I say it the right way. So I'm going to leave some stuff out. We can talk afterwards. But what I can say online, which I know I did remember him saying was, a lot of the reason why Fatima stayed and you got sent home was because Fatima still had story left that needed, that had to be used to carry the rest of the... So I do remember David saying saying that sentence to me. Like her story was yeah. was they like they needed they they the did he say time. they needed her? Did he use the words he needed her? He'll he'll kick my ass later, but they needed her story. So yeah. no, yeah. Sure, um, one of the things is that they want girls with a story. Like every girl needs to have a storyline, and Fatima's storyline was definitely much stronger than mine. So. Mm -hmm. And um, that was one thing, plus the, you know, needing the passport and all that stuff. So there was but a lot of reasons. What I will say, and I don't think David St. John would ever lie to me, of all people on this earth, his Ollie Bear that he calls me, <laughs> the passport situation, he told me, he said, he started by saying Ollie Bear, that was a real situation. I damn it! I wish I I wish I could have called him so I can get him to tell me exactly. But from the, when we talked about it like months ago, he was like, whatever the whatever the situation was going with the passport, that was a real situation that like was happening in real time. Like somebody dropped somebody on the back end, like in their offices, dropped the ball somewhere, and something wasn't communicated the right way. So the problem with that is that when you sign up you have to have all that sorted out. So that's the weird part that... You yeah, let me shut up, because I don't remember. <laughs> when you sign up for Top Model, passports and all that stuff is supposed to be all sorted out. So uh -huh. maybe they knew, maybe they did know. I Well, of course they knew. They knew that all of her stuff wasn't sorted out and that they were going to intertwine it into the show. I don't know, but it, she probably did go to the passport office and all that stuff, but the fact that she got to stay or miss the show or whatever when everything wasn't sorted out was definitely a part of her storyline that they mm -hmm. did for the show, you know? Mm -hmm. So the storyline definitely was the reason why she stayed as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, but definitely. they didn't have to send me home. But um, the producers did tell me that, you know, Ken, from the very beginning, he was like, Stacy. he told me, he's like, if you're not creating drama, you're not going to stay. So he told mm -hmm. me that. So I got comfortable. Ken Mock. Hmm? Ken Mock. Yeah. Ken Mock. He told me in my face, he was like, if you're not producing, if you're not producing drama, you're going home. So um, I got comfortable in the show where I thought, I thought that if I just keep being a good model and showing I'm a good model, that I would stay. But no, <laughs> I needed to be a little bit more dramatic. So in the end, I was like, I'm not. Being the nice girl, I wasn't going to keep me afloat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so. 
So Jeffrey Acosta wants to know what happened after the elimination in the airport hangar? Did everyone immediately get on the flight and leave you there, or was there more that you can share? Um, I think that the girls did. I'm not sure because I got eliminated, so I didn't go um, with them. They, I believe that they did get on the plane and leave the next day because we had the next day. Pack. Yeah, um, and I got sent back to the sequestered <laughs> hotel, so I had to stay there for a few weeks where you just be isolated by yourself, um, which is very traumatizing, um, but I stayed in New York. I didn't go with the girls. So that means you did not walk in the final runway. No, I didn't. Um I think once you got over there, they had those girls maybe walk in the final, but I definitely wasn't. I didn't go overseas. Jurassic Bradness wants to know, how does she feel watching herself on TV? What would you have to say about how you were edited? Um, I didn't mind how I, I was very cautious about how I was going to portray myself on TV. Um, so I didn't mind how I was edited. And uh, it was embarrassing for the first episode because my grandfather <laughs> and my dad were watching me give a lap dance. Um, <laughs> you should have told him it was a praise dance. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Blessed in the city, honey. Um, but other than that, I think that the way they edited me was really who I was just the mm -hmm. nice girl so the nice yes I was a nice girl which what I'm saying about like Ken told me he was just like he's like he's like I heard you're the nice girl he told me straight in my face he's like you're the nice girl and I was like yeah and he was like again he's like you're gonna have to create drama you can't just be the nice girl and I was like um I was like yeah 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 I'm gonna create drama don't worry da -da -da. <laughs> And he was like, okay, good, because all the girls in the house, they think that you're the bitch in the house. And I was like, oh. and when he said that, I was like, oh, no, 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 I hate, I hate all those bitches. I don't know. I just went out of character, and I was just like, no, 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 no. And when he said, when I, when I went, did all that reaction, he smiled, and he was like, all right. He was like, okay, you're going to make it in the house. That was before I made it in the house. And so when he smiled, I knew he lied to me. I was like, you made that. He had such a smile. He's like, okay, I got a reaction out of you. He's like, that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, you lied to me to get that reaction. But I knew that's what he wanted. So that's some other tea that people don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, hilarious. CCKZ is asking, who do you think the show slash production had done dirty with editing and overall treatment? I feel like they really did Dominique, like, you know, they were really hard on her and the way they portrayed her um, on the show. Um, I felt bad for, I was just like, man, they're like really going on, you know, you know, calling her a man and all this stuff and that she would never make it or whatever. And like, whatever she was, they would say, I thought like, I thought they edited her, her editing was kind of like a little hard. Mm. What was your, outside of the story you just shared with us um, that you had with Ken, Ken Mark before, um, the cycle began filming. What was your relationship like with production and, you know, all of that, good or bad? It was good. Um, there was uh, one girl that was like our mom, a production late girl. I don't remember her name right now, but uh, for the most part, production was really good. They were really good to us. Um, the producers were good and even one of the producers she kept in touch after the show and, oh nice and she would like even help get us book jobs after the show and um she had me do like some guest uh fashion shows and stuff like that so the, some of the producers like even kept in touch after the show nice 
So Alberto Garcia wants to know, how does she feel about her husband writing the song Top Model? She's a top model after her, which was used for future elimination background music. Um, so that was exciting because he was able to come onto the Tyra show afterwards and he told Tyra that he wrote a song um, for me when when I got off the show, he would just sing it to me all the time. He'd be like, top model. And he would just sing it, sing it. So when we got on the Tyra show, he asked Tyra if he could sing it to her. And she was like, I love it. And it was a really great opportunity when she, they were like, we'll pick it up for the show. And so I was like, awesome. <laughs> so he got his little royalties from the show. And um, it was it was a great opportunity. Shout out to Tyra Bang. Yeah, for sure. The Oju one. The Oju one is saying, love Stacey Ann. She should, I, I didn't know if I was saying something mysterious or a puff of smoke with a blue. I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I had to take a pause right fast. Um, they're saying, love Stacey Ann. She should have gone further. Her look was very interesting from all the Cycle 10 girls. Let's hear about her post show work in New York and London. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to all the fans. I love you guys so much. That was one of the best parts of the show is to get the fan base. Um, I have one fan, Anton from Russia. He follows me and does like anything I'm doing. He's always, always supporting me. Um, that's the best part of being on the show is the fan base. Um, but after that, um, you know, I continue. I actually went back to school. So I was in school when I had the audition and I come from a Caribbean background where going to school and finishing school. Mm -hmm. was important. Mm -hmm. so I was the first to go to college. So when most of the girls on my show went straight to New York to start modeling, I went back to school. So that kind of hindered me a little bit where when I was fresh faced, I should have went to New York, but my parents were like, we don't care about modeling. You're going back to school. So I went back to school and I graduated. And then I went to New York to start modeling. Um, but they had already started filming a new season and stuff like that. But um, I still think I did really well. Um, you know, I wanted to do fashion. And I still traveled. Went to South Africa. Went to London. And did a lot of fashion shows around the world. So I still got to fulfill the dreams I wanted to. Then. Are you still modeling now? Well, I took a little break because um, I wanted to buy a house. So I took a little break and um, got a job in an airline and I saved up so I could buy this house in Florida. So during COVID, I got the house built and then I moved to Florida and I started doing like a lot of social media stuff, you know, um, you know, designers send you the clothes and you, you mm -hmm. model for them and send it out like that. So I was doing a lot of that stuff during COVID, um, some modeling here and there. But I think I kind of want to start my own, like, modeling boot camp. Ooh. So that's what I'm working on down here in Florida, trying to find a, a space where I can give back to other girls and um, and boys and just – not only just with modeling, but with self-esteem stuff, mm -hmm. too. Dope. Congratulations on all of that, Stacey Thank Ann. That you. is so freaking amazing. Thank you. No, you're so welcome. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one last question. But before I ask you that question, guys, if you're watching, you're still tuned in. This is when I'm going to do the live Q&A with, with you guys, because we still have a little bit of time, a little bit of time left. So if you want to get me to ask Stacey Ann a question live, get a badge in the live chat. The badge will pop up next to your name so that when I go to look down in the comments, I know where to put my eyes at to ask her your question. So go ahead and figure that stuff out. While you guys do that, I'm going to ask Stacey my last question, which is, if you were in front of Tyra Banks right now in 2021, what would you say to her? I would say that... First of all, that I love her and 
a lot of people say they don't like her, but at the end of the day, it was a job for her, but she mm -hmm. still gave so many girls an opportunity, you know? Um, so I would say thank you to her mm -hmm. uh, for the opportunity. But I would also say that, you know, I wish you would have gave me more of a chance on the show. But mm. um, at the end of the day, like the producer said, he was like, we know that, you know, you're going to do well with even if you don't win, you know. So that was it. It was still a great opportunity. So I would just I'd give her a hug <laughs> if I saw her right now. I can't believe I didn't ask you earlier. What were your thoughts on like judges like Paulina, um, Nigel Barker? I actually about Miss J. What did you think about Paulina? Well, it was her first time on the show. Um, mm -hmm. I liked her. She took us in like like a big mom, and she gave us all books. Like she had just written a book or a novel that she had or something like that, and she gave us each of us a book and. She would give us a lot of advice about her modeling days, you know. She wasn't harsh, like, uh, at least with me, or at least with my comments. Like, she was, like, she was always, like, on my side, I felt like, um, during the show. Um, Nigel? I don't know. I didn't really get to build that much a relationship with Nigel, but you know, just him being such a renowned photographer, everyone just was so excited to work with him. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did, like, you know, he would just be like, "Fine." Okay. <laughs> um, You're back. Um, he would. He's also would just give you advice about like mm. modeling and stuff like that. Um, and uh, same, I thought all the judges did their did a good job of giving us advice how to be be, be a better model. Mm -hmm. Good. We got one question from Randy Milan, and he's asking: Did any of your photos from Cycle Ten make it into your book? In the beginning, they did. Um, of course, the pink one did, and. phone is acting out okay um no, you're fine and the uh homeless shoot one did but you quickly found out in the real world um in the real modeling world those top model pictures are too dramatic for like real life modeling like if you're gonna book like a, a beauty campaign or if you're gonna book a commercial for macy's like mm -hmm. they don't want to see a picture of you covered in meat <laughs> so um those pictures were in my book in the beginning but later on like unless um a client is a huge uh fan of the show then that they most people in the industry don't care about your top model pictures they're too they're too animated. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gina Bean, eighty-four, wants to know: Did you realize um what happened to Kim? And we're talking about Kimberly. Um, when she went home. No, I, I believe they're referring to what happened um to her after she went home. Unfortunately, I believe it was like a couple years after um you guys' cycle. She transitioned on oh no i didn't know that. you didn't know no i had no I... idea really no <laughs> okay so she uh, a few years later she transitioned mm -hmm. no i had no idea mm -hmm. oh marvita marvita and i uh, talked about it in our chat she um unfortunately took her own life um and uh Marvita was just talking about like some of the things that she picked up on and noticed about um what she was going through during her time in in the top model house that could have potentially been like you know little red signs to you know um I'm trying to recall but I remember someone mentioning like uh, maybe like having a, like a, a eating disorder, but I don't think it was 
him. I think it was one of the other models that mm -hmm. was, had an issue with that. And like, um, but no, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. May she rest in peace. May yes. she may she rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Um, I think that's it for all of the questions. And for the people out there, because I know we have a lot of international fans, when um in black culture, when you try to when you're trying to be a little sensitive, instead of saying someone someone flat out died, and I just, this is just a learning, you know, teachable moment in black American culture, instead of just saying someone flat out died, you say they transitioned over. Right, yeah. It's 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 black American culture. I see a lot of people asking about she transition, she transitioned, they're confused. No. And again in black American culture, instead of just saying someone died, a more respectable, less um abrasive way to say that is either she transitioned or you or you hear people say she passed on. But transition is a is a phrase that black people use. So yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I didn't even know that. That's mm -hmm. terrible. But thank you for for sharing that no you're welcome you're welcome um so good to meet you I'm yes to your show tonight mm -hmm. thank you for having me of course thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me the fans oh, have been pulling my scalp out trying to trying to get us together and they finally got it and it's all thanks to you. All thanks to you. So thank you no, so thank much. Thank you as well. Thank you, fans. Everyone, <laughs> wave goodbye to Stacey Air from giving an amazing a and exclusive chat it's on the cycle. Cold, of thank you so much for all the support after all these years. I <laughs> should so cool. Can you sing your song as you leave? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Class is dismissed. The only homework you guys have is to give someone a hug today. If you see a bitch walking down the street, give them a hug and give them a compliment. Say, bitch, you look good today. Give them a hug. So much negativity out here in this world. Listen. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting, for watching, for tuning in, all the things of the things of the things. This video will be uploaded to the Oliver Twix TWIX3 YouTube channel where you can catch this chat as well as, I think somebody told me we have like over 70 a and chats with past contestants and judges, bitch. We have some type of work we throwing up in here. We get this all the pain, got the tap, got the crap, and all the mouth. Until next time, guys, be safe, be sure to parade and kegel. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss it. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like.